Rose and welcome back to Cheap Lazy Vegan and another video. Today we are doing another meal prep, very exciting, and we're gonna do a weight loss friendly version of a meal prep, yes. You guys, this video, it is going to be weight loss friendly, it is going to be vegan, it is going to be budget friendly, and it is also going to be delicious because we do not sacrifice taste for the sake of anything, okay? Food is life and life is food. I don't even know if that's a saying. But anyway, so we're gonna do a meal prep and uh, I'm gonna show you guys a breakfast, lunch, and dinner and also a snack idea. These are just ideas, inspirations, if you will. So take whatever you want out of this video. All of the recipes will be in a blog post linked down below. So definitely check that out if you are interested in making any of these. And yeah, if you guys are interested in more meal prep videos after you watch this video, I will also have my meal prep playlist linked down below as well. So check that out after if you wish. And before we jump in, just letting you know that my No More Cabbage Soup ebook, which is a weight loss friendly recipes ebook, is out at this moment. Yes, it has been out. So if you haven't checked it out yet, check it out. It is linked down below. It is full of vegan recipes. There's over, I believe, 110 vegan recipes that are great for sustainable weight loss. They are delicious, lots of high protein recipes and lower calorie recipes that won't feel like they are lower calorie, if that makes sense. Again, the link is down below. You can check out my other eBooks as well. I also have eBook bundles where you can save some money. So that is linked down below. And now we can just get straight to this meal prep. Let's get started. All right guys, so for the first recipe, we are going to be making high protein congee for breakfast. This is definitely a comfort food for me, but it's also really great for weight loss because it's high in water content and we're also making it high in protein. We're gonna start by adding a small amount of oil on a large deep pan or pot. Then we're gonna cook up some finely chopped mushrooms for a couple of minutes. Let them sweat for a bit and then let's add in some minced garlic. I have a little hack so I can have garlic all the time, but I hate mincing garlic. So if you are also the same, I have a video on that along with other lazy cooking hacks. So I'll link that down below. We're gonna cook up the garlic with the mushrooms for a few minutes, adding a little splash of water if necessary. Now let's add in our cooked rice. You can use freshly cooked rice or leftover rice, up to you. Normally for congee, I prefer to use white rice because it's more starchy than brown rice, but I've also used brown rice before as well. I like to add in lots of water and make sure you break apart the rice well. And we're also going to add in red split lentils, which is going to be one of our protein sources. And we're gonna cook that with the rice while it's becoming congee. Let's cover this up and bring it to a boil. Now I like to add in lots of water because I like my congee to be quite thin and liquidy, but it's up to you how thick you want your congee. It's honestly a personal preference. Once it comes to a boil, we're gonna turn it down to a low simmer and cook it until it becomes very porridge-like. Keep checking on it every once in a while to stir it and add more water as needed because it will thicken up a lot more thanks to the lentils that we added in. Once it becomes your desired consistency, you can also add in some soft tofu for extra protein. At the end here, I'm just adding in some soy sauce and also some ground ginger to flavor our congee. Freshly grated ginger would be better for this, but every time I get fresh ginger, I just don't use it enough and then it goes bad. <laughs> so I simply use ground ginger. Mix this well and now our congee is ready to go. Now I decided to add in green onions and toasted sesame oil at the point of serving because I wanted to make sure to retain the freshness of the green onion and also all the deliciousness of the toasted sesame oil without losing any flavor from reheating. So that's what I would suggest. And you can also top your congee with some pieces of nori, which I just cut up with some kitchen scissors. I recommend keeping a container of chopped green onions in your fridge so you can easily add in some fresh green onions on top of your congee anytime you heat this up for breakfast. This is also handy for any time you want to use green onions, which for me is very often. Anyway, that's basically it. This reheats really well. You can either heat it in the microwave or on the stove. If you heat it on the stove, you can add in a little extra water on there or add in some more veggie broth, whatever you'd like. Add in more seasoning if needed. And of course, make sure at the end, top your congee with some toasted sesame oil because it makes such a big difference and it's so good. For a simple snack, I decided to make the oil-free hummus recipe that I shared recently. So first, we're going to strain a can of chickpeas over a bowl and save that chickpea water, also known as aquafaba. 
Now we're going to add the chickpeas into a food processor or a blender and let's add in some tahini, a quarter cup of the aquafaba that we saved earlier, some lemon juice, garlic cloves, cumin and salt and of course for all the measurements the link is down below for the recipe. Now blend this well and now you have your super easy hummus. If you need to you can always add in a little more aquafaba to help the blending process or to make the hummus a bit thinner if that's your preference but I find this amount to be perfect. I just stored my hummus into two separate containers and I actually froze one and defrosted it later which worked perfectly fine so you can definitely do that if you think it's too much hummus for one week and you can also feel free to add some paprika on top as well as some parsley if you wanted to and you can also drizzle on some oil if you want to but I didn't feel the need so I'm going to be eating my hummus with some baby carrots but if you want you can have it with other veggies of course I find that it helps to wash and cut them up beforehand so that's what I would recommend is to always prepare your veggies and fruits beforehand so that they are conveniently ready to eat and you're much more likely to eat it and of course, you can also eat your hummus with crackers and toast, whatever you prefer. The next recipe I wanted to try making is vegan fish filet. I would probably do this in the very beginning of my meal prep or even the night before because we will be marinating. So that's my little tip. First, I'm going to cut up a block of extra firm tofu into around eight different slices like so. Think of these as little mini fish steaks or something. Then you can create little lines in the tofu pieces by placing two chopsticks on either side of the tofu to prevent you from cutting through the entire piece. Shout out to Sam from It Doesn't Taste Like Chicken for this tip that I got from her vegan salmon recipe, which I highly recommend. These lines not only look aesthetically pleasing, but they also allow the marinade to get into the tofu to make it more flavorful. Now, if you want your tofu to be extra flavored, you can also freeze a block of tofu in advance, thaw it out, squeeze out that excess water, and that way it will really soak up that marinade. And that's another little tip. Now let's make our marinade. Mix together white vinegar, miso paste, lemon juice, kelp powder, and dark or regular soy sauce. And also you can add in a dry nori sheet for that extra fishy flavor. You can feel free to crumble it up with your fingers into small pieces and add it into the marinade that way. Or you can be like me and decide to blend it all up along with the rest of the marinade ingredients in a small blender cup. That's what I did. I feel like that really makes this dish taste a lot more fishy. So that's what I decided to do. Now we can marinate our tofu pieces and let it sit for at least 30 minutes, preferably longer. Again, if you wanna do this the night before, fantastic. If you wanna freeze your tofu, fantastic. While we're marinating to go with our vegan fish, I'm gonna make a big giant salad. Again, I always eat more veggies when it's all prepared and ready to go. I'm gonna be making my everyday kale salad, which is a recipe already on my blog, just with a few changes. And again, all the recipes linked down below guys. Into a large mixing bowl, I'm gonna add in some chopped kale, cabbage, bell pepper, tomatoes, diced onion, and edamame beans. And then in a small bowl, I'm gonna to mix together the simple tahini dressing, which I always make, which is simply tahini, soy sauce, maple syrup, or agave nectar, nutritional yeast, garlic powder, and apple cider vinegar or lemon juice. Now we're gonna mix this and add in small amounts of water or lemon juice as needed to thin this mixture out to your desired consistency. Now into the salad, let's add Add our dressing and what I love about the salad is that it doesn't really get soggy throughout the week and it's such a great salad to meal prep and enjoy it for a few days so I like to make this every once in a while so I can eat a healthy salad as a side and as an accompaniment to pretty much all my meals so let's move back to our vegan fish fillet once the tofu pieces have nicely marinated again you might want to do this the night before I'm gonna heat a small amount of oil on a nonstick pan, and then we're gonna cover the tofu pieces lightly with a little bit of cornstarch. This part is optional, but I wanted to create a little bit of a crispier coating. Then we're gonna cook up the tofu pieces on each side for a few minutes to allow the sides to get nice and crispy and slightly golden. And then with the leftover marinade, you can either keep it in the fridge and make these tofu pieces again. But for me, I decided to pour the marinade back into the tofu once it was almost done cooking because I really wanted like a lot of flavor and I felt the tofu wasn't super flavorful yet because I think I didn't marinate it long enough. So yeah, that's what I did. Once you're almost done cooking the tofu pieces, you can turn the heat down to a low and simply pour some or all the marinade back in and flip it a few times to allow that tofu to absorb the marinade. So that's a little trick there. And once we're done, we can simply store our vegan fish to eat as a protein source with any meal of our choice 
You can enjoy this with the everyday kale salad, which is what I did. And I would also add in some sort of a carb, such as rice, toast, sweet potato, anything like that uh, with my meal, since I can't really have a low carb meal and feel satisfied, not in my DNA guys. So I would suggest doing that to make this a more complete meal. Simply add in whatever carb of your choice, up to you. And last but definitely not least, let's make a kale and broccoli pasta. This is super simple yet really delicious. First, we're gonna bring some water to a boil in a large pot or wok. Then we're gonna cook up a lot of chopped broccoli until they are cooked and relatively tender. Then you can take the cooked broccoli out and set it aside and now use the same broccoli water and we can cook up our pasta. You can use whatever pasta of choice. My favorite is usually spaghetti or in this case, spaghettini. Now let's heat up a large nonstick pan on medium high heat and let's add in some olive oil. My pan went a little crazy, okay? I think I overheated it, but it was fine at the end. Don't do that. And now I'm gonna add my minced garlic and lots of it. Now guys, my aim in life is to be someone that does not always burn garlic, so I'm working on this. So yeah, if it gets too hot guys, always take the pan off the stove for a couple seconds and just, yeah, try not to burn the garlic, okay? I. I'm notorious for burning garlic. Anyways, now we're gonna add the broccoli back in and cook it with the oil and garlic for a few minutes. And at the end here, let's add in a ton of chopped kale and let that wilt and simply cook as well. We also have to add a protein of choice, of course. I'm using chickpeas, which is one of my favorites and it goes really well with this. So we're gonna use a can of chickpeas, which we've drained and rinsed added that in and once the pasta was cooked al dente i saved a bit of the pasta water on the side and then i drained the pasta and now we're going to add everything together we're going to add the broccoli and kale mixture into the pasta and add a small splash of that pasta water and let this cook together for a few minutes now add in some salt at the stage make sure you add enough so that it tastes delicious and one little thing I thought of while I was making this dish is that next time I would start with maybe half the oil to cook the garlic and broccoli and then add the other half of the oil at the very end to keep that kind of oily deliciousness while still using the same amount of oil, if that makes sense. Because I feel like, I don't know, that's just in my mind. I'm gonna try that next time and I think it'll be really good. This was still delicious, but that's just what I thought of when I was cooking. Now I also added in some garlic powder as well because I love a garlicky moment. And of course, give this a taste again, see what else it needs. Maybe you wanna add some chili flakes. Maybe you wanna add more garlic powder. You wanna add maybe more salt and pepper as needed, okay? And when you're serving this, you can always top this with some vegan Parmesan cheese, which I have a very simple recipe for and I'll link it down below. Or you can simply top with some nutritional yeast and maybe some parsley or whatever else you want. And there you have it, kale and broccoli pasta, full of veggies, ready to eat, ready to put into little containers and enjoy throughout the week. All right, you guys, so that is pretty much it for my meal prep. You guys, look at all this food. I'm so excited because now I have basically a week's worth of food in front of me and I don't have to think about it. I can just heat it up or just take it out of the fridge and enjoy. So these are all healthy meals very good for weight loss. I hope this video was helpful to you guys. I hope it gave you some inspiration to do some meal prep, especially nowadays where groceries are so expensive and food just in general is so expensive. It is good to meal prep because it will just save you money. Eating out is also very expensive. So definitely try meal prepping. It will make your life so much easier, save you so much time, so much money, and help you with your fitness goals. So yes, if you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up. And of course, if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe. And all of the recipes will be in blog posts that will be linked down below. So don't forget to check that out. And of course, check out my No More Cabbage Soup ebook and all of my other ebooks. The links are all down below. And that's pretty much it. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, TikTok, all those things. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!